And I think we've also seen, of course, as part of the pandemic, uh, the introduction of lots of new regulation, payment schemes, tax relief programs, furlough schemes, a short time work in, in Germany. I think that's another complexity that international payroll teams had to work through. So they've been incredibly busy just staying on top of all those changes that are coming at them um, from the regulatory perspective. And as you said, I think that's also then led to on the employee side, you know, lots of employees becoming more mobile, you know, moving their own location. So, you know, if I don't have to go into the office, maybe, you know, I don't want to work in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is very expensive. I'm going to move to um, either the middle of the country or I'm going to move to Spain because, you know, the weather's nice there and cost of living is uh, much more affordable. And that, of course, then requires the payroll team to keep up with, well, how do we pay this employee now in Spain, right? Welcome to the Payroll Podcast with your host, Nick Day. Find out what it takes to truly discover what it takes to elevate your career within payroll as we meet with the industry leaders who are shaping the industry for tomorrow. Hello and welcome back to the Payroll Podcast. My name is Nick Day, CEO at JJ Recruitment Group, specialist global payroll recruiters. Now, whether you are listening to this for the first time or the hundredth time, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you all for listening and for tuning in to every single episode, because together, globally, we are all raising the profile of payroll. Of course, if you do enjoy the show, please, please, please remember to subscribe to it, review it as well as if if you can. But more importantly, spread the word and share it with all of your payroll colleagues. With over 66 episodes released today, there should be something for everyone and at every single level. And of course, it's available on all major podcast channels. So anyway, that aside, on to today's guest, because today I am joined by Mark Oliver Fieldler, founder of global payroll platform provider, Payzar. Now, Mark is an experienced international payroll executive who brings to today's show a strong background in setting up and scaling new payroll business models, in particular those associated with new payroll technology-driven ventures within the B2B SaaS cloud space. Now, before founding Payzar, Mark held leadership roles with major corporations, including Hewlett-Packard, Oracle, and ADP. And it was at ADP when Mark became intimately acquainted with the challenges that payroll people face every single day, as well as the many limitations, of course, that exist within the solutions market that were being provided by other providers at the time. So this experience led Mark to found Payzar, an innovative global payroll management platform with a slightly different model to the traditional large aggregators that we see dominating the market. We're going to find out a lot more about that during the course of this episode. But essentially, instead of providing payroll through a closed system of exclusive national providers, Payzar is a provider agnostic. So companies can integrate with any provider they choose anywhere in the world, leading to clients enjoying greater flexibility, no lock-in effect, and significantly lower costs. And of course, with shorter integration times as well. Now, we're not focused on Payzar. Mark is a keen tennis player, golfer, and bread baker. And we're going to find out a little bit more about that later on as well. So Mark, without further ado, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much, Nick. Thanks for having me today. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this broadcast uh, podcast and uh, love listening and watching uh, all the episodes that you've been doing. So uh, and thank you for having me today. Oh, my absolute pleasure. pleasure. I'm glad to hear that you're a listener as well. So please keep sharing. Please keep listening. And let's kick off with our first question, a new question for all of the new podcast guests that we have on the show, which is this. What does the word payroll mean to you? Well, payroll, I think, is, is the environment that brings a company together, um, makes sure that the employees that are um, working uh, at a company are properly compensated for the work that they're doing. And we know, you know, anyone who's worked in the payroll industry knows that it's very complex. Yep. Uh, you know, you have uh, lots of different rules and regulations uh, that you need to abide to and that you need to stay on top of. And of course, they're very different from country to country. And so, you know, payroll is central to any organization, whether you're a small local business with only a handful of employees or you're a large multinational with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of employees. You need to run your payroll. You need to run it every month. You need to run it 100% correctly, 100% of the time. And I think that makes it so 
uh, challenging, but also fun and exciting for those of us who, who live in this world. Couldn't agree more. Now, of course, I mentioned in my introduction, you are the founder of Paysal, which I understand you founded in 2016. It's a business that provides a single platform to help clients with their global payroll needs. I love your tagline, which is global payroll made simple, smart and secure. So tell us a little bit more about the journey that led you to starting this business venture. And more importantly, I guess, as the new world of work that we're all embracing uh, right now, how has the business evolved and, and, and where are you now with, with Paysal? Yeah, of course, absolutely. So, uh, look, I guess the idea for um, setting up this business came from um, my period of time that I spent at ADP. So I worked there for, for about five years, and that's where I really became intimately familiar with the payroll industry and the payroll environment. I, I learned kind of the global payroll model from the inside, um, ADP yeah. being one of the, the leading providers in this space. Um, especially with various different multi-country offerings. And so I saw the complexities that solutions like ADP and you know, other uh, global vendors are trying to address. But it struck me that the model as it had been built up by the incumbent providers at the time was not very user or customer friendly in many ways. Uh, it's very um, disruptive for an organization to adopt a solution like that, the sort of traditional aggregator model, um, because you have to essentially rip, rip out all your existing local payrolls and then re-implement with new vendors, right? That's part of what this uh, closed aggregator model requires you to do. And, you know, most, most people running payroll, they don't like to change payroll unless something is not working properly, sure. right? Um, and so if you can avoid taking apart the local payrolls, which is a bit like you know, doing open heart surgery on a, on a live patient, and you can still get the benefits that customers or companies are after in terms of harmonizing, standardizing your payroll operations and processes, um, helping you to integrate your data in one central place and, and automate uh, the way you're transacting your, your payroll processes further, without having to take take out all your local payrolls, that's a very, very appealing value proposition. So I, I then left when I kind of started thinking about how could this be done differently with a number of uh, co-conspirators from, from ADP, from my ADP mm -hmm. days, we said, well, let's try to do this in a way where customers can leverage everything that they've invested in into the local relationships with their local payroll vendors or also in their, their in-house um, payroll structures because a lot of companies are running hybrid models, right? They're having not just everything outsourced, so, so they're also having parts of the population being paid in-house. So let's keep those structures in place, but put our model, kind of the aggregation and the consolidation on top of that. And that's ultimately what pays our is and what has become of that idea is basically we're an open platform. We can integrate with essentially any local payroll system. Uh, by now also integrating with HR and finance solutions that are sitting adjacent to payroll. And so what that does for customers is that they can basically have all the flexibility working with the best in-country vendors, either their existing vendors or where they might want to have a change because they've maybe grown out of the capabilities that the local vendor has provided to them. They can also change that local partner and still bring everything together in our central platform. Right. And so this is very applicable to many multinational organizations that are, for example, moving towards more centralized sort of shared service structures um, that are looking for more governance and transparency across what's happening in the pure environment. Great. And I guess it's great that it links to so many, so many solutions as well. I mean, taking things forward then where we are at the minute, we're in a new world of work. We're, we're coming out of what has been a, a, a very challenging pandemic for many, particularly within payroll. How do you think payroll has changed after everything that's happened over the last couple of years? And it's not just COVID related. You know, we're looking at workforce mobility, the globalization yeah. of workforces, which we're seeing a huge impact on recruitment services at the minute. Um, <clears throat> we're certainly seeing an awful lot of accelerated digital transformation, which has uh, resulted in a huge influx of new vacancies, which we're, we're desperately trying to, to fill and help clients with. And it's, I would say it's unprecedented for us as a recruitment business. We've never seen more business, uh, never had more positions to work on ever, I think, in 18 years of doing this. That must have had a knock-on effect as well within the, 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 the platform supplier space. So how have things changed from a global payroll platform provider perspective? Yeah, it's been, it's been certainly interesting times for all of us, right, um, whether we work in payroll or not. But certainly, I, I'd say in, in the payroll world, 
uh, what we've seen is sort of three big um, trends or impacts on, on the payroll space, on the industry. Um, number one is actually, I think, positive for payroll professionals and for the payroll function. Um, I think there's an increased recognition in the, uh, the marketplace and the um, uh, enterprise environment that payroll plays a super central role in, in any organization, right? I think the crisis has shown that you can furlough your sales and marketing teams, you can slow down your production, but what you can't do is you cannot stop doing payroll, right? You need to, show must go on kind of, um, sure. you need to make sure that you continue to pay your employees um, reliably, accurately, properly, no matter where they are in the world, right? So I think that's put a big spotlight on payroll, which you know, in many organizations um, exists a little bit sort of in the shadows of, of the corporate structure and is sort of expected to just work. And I think we've seen that even in, in kind of public recognition. I think, for example, in the UK, payroll professionals have been uh, classified as essential workers, right? Yeah. And yeah. so I think I think that's a that's in a, in a way a nice side effect of um, if there are such you know things coming out of this um, terrible pandemic um, that payroll just has been sort of elevated in terms of its its recognition as a very essential function. But then I think it's also created obviously a, a lot of additional complexities. Um, what we've seen in the last uh, eighteen to to twenty four months. You know, you, you you already talked about the fact that um, you know some organizations, a lot of organizations you know, are very fragmented and siloed, how they traditionally have managed their global payroll environments. And um, as you're getting in a, into a, a crisis situation like this, where you really need to have visibility in terms of who needs to get paid, where and what's going on, and you don't have your normal uh, on-site interaction mechanisms, that creates a big challenge, right, for organizations to be able to, to stay on top of that. And I think we've also seen, of course, as part of the pandemic, uh, the introduction of lots of new regulation, payment schemes, tax relief programs, furlough schemes, a short time work in, in Germany. I think that's another complexity that international payroll teams had to work through. So they've been incredibly busy just staying on top of all those changes that are coming at them um, from a regulatory perspective. And as you said, I think that's also then led to on the employee side, you know, lots of employees becoming more mobile, you know, moving their own location. So, you know, if I don't have to go into the office, maybe, you know, I don't want to work in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is very expensive. I'm going to move to um, either the middle of the country or I'm going to move to Spain because, you know, the weather's nice there and cost of living is uh, much more affordable. And that, of course, then requires the payroll team to keep up with, well, how do we pay this employee now in Spain, right? Um, they maybe never had someone living in Spain. And so suddenly they need to figure out how to, how to do that. So I think there's been a number of different impacts and challenges, uh, good and bad in a way, or yeah. you know, creating more complexity for, for a payroll team that, um, that have resulted from what we've seen in the last um, 18 to 24 months. I think it was quite ironic. You mentioned at the start that businesses were furloughing staff to try and slow things down. But actually, every time they furloughed somebody, it actually made the payroll function busier and harder as they had to deal with all the calculations and everything else. So it was a, it had a the reverse effect on payroll departments, uh, certainly in the UK anyway. Now, Absolutely. I know also uh, the pandemic changed things for you at home as well, as it did for many of us. Uh, but I may as well ask this because I believe that the pandemic for you, Mark, uh, led you to a new passion, which is bed breaking. And it'd be remiss of me not to mention it here because I believe you've become <laughs> a bit of a, a bed breaking expert during the pandemic. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, you know, I think I think we, we've probably all um, have over that period of time sitting at home adopted very different um, new hobbies and, and coping mechanisms, if you want. Yeah, so I've um, I've always been a baker, mostly pastry and and uh, cake baking, but uh, the pandemic somehow, you know, I talked to a friend and he's had his own starter going, and so. Um, so, well, this sounds interesting. I've never, I've never actually succeeded baking bread before, so I, uh, I took that on as kind of a new, new thing. It was incredibly tough at first. I uh, yeah. baked a lot of really flat, super hard hockey pucks or frisbees, but then, you know, after after a few tries, after a few weeks, I started to get the hang of it. And for me, it's almost um, still doing it. It's you know quite meditational in a way. So it's um, a hobby that's really good. 
there's a lot of preparation involved. Um, you know, you need to start the dough and then there's folding and stretching and you put it back into uh, and let it rise again. Uh, so I like the whole process. Um, it's very hands-on, uh, which my typical day in the office um, doesn't look like that. There's not that much uh, hands-on work that I do. It's mostly conference calls and things like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my only challenge is that I'm the only one eating bread in my family. Okay, so, so there's a waistline thing to consider here. When, when I bake the bread, it, it started to really uh, grow on my waistline, so I had to slow down the production, but I still like it a lot. Ah, good for you. I'm going to make a really cheesy analogy then. You said it went, it's a bit like the payroll industry then. So the pandemic hit, the whole industry went a little bit flat. You know, <laughs> it was stretched, it was pulled, you know, pillar to post, and now it's rising again post pandemic. There you go. I have just done that embarrassingly. I was just. Uh... Very, 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 very nice picture. Yes. There you go. There you go. I've aligned the, the, your bed breaking with the payroll industry as a whole. So let's take it back to payroll. Um, as someone who's in the market and, and you are speaking to payroll leaders on a regular basis globally as well, which I think is important. Many of those are going through major transformations. I mentioned digital transformation earlier on, you know, in, in terms of some, one of the things that we've really seen as a result of the pandemic that, that companies are looking to embrace transformation and, and get up to speed and, and they recognize where things perhaps weren't as streamlined as they could be and they're trying to make changes. What's the kind of feedback you're getting from the leaders then that you speak to in terms of what yeah. they're trying to achieve through their transformations, particularly with the payroll uh, element to it? Yeah, I mean, look, I think I think what we see and what we hear talking with clients and prospects is that, you know, during the pandemic, people just got stuck in, right? Payroll people just had to step up, as they always do, and they managed through all the challenges and complexities that we were just talking about, with people moving and new laws and regulations being introduced, just based on their pure willpower and dedication and loyalty to the organization just make it work and you know a lot of them worked crazy hours um during that time just to make sure that people would get their paycheck um, sure. as they were supposed to but i think there's a there's a recognition that that's not sustainable and that you know there's some lessons learned from this pandemic as well in terms of how we need to transform the payroll function to make it more resilient for future crises to make it more sustainable and more you know scalable as we as we move forward uh, so we're, we're seeing three big themes um really when we when we talk to clients in terms of what they're trying to uh, achieve and how they're trying to transform and advance their their payroll functions number one is around centralization so i think a lot of organizations throughout the pandemic have realized that we don't really know how the payroll gets done um, in far-flung countries that, that we have in our um, in our company portfolio. Uh, we really need to have better visibility, better access, better governance over how we're executing our payroll in a reliable manner. And so, you know, shifts toward more shared service structures, towards centers of excellence are something that are um, you know, definitely quite common. Also, um, so one driver is governance and, and control and, and, and better um, resilience. But there's also obviously a cost aspect to that as well, because I think you know, a lot of organizations have been hit hard financially from an economic perspective. And so they also need to do more with less. And so again, kind of centralizing and finding synergies is a way of doing that. Second big aspect then is digitization and, and automation. Um, as we already talked about, in a lot of parts of the, um, the, the payroll operating environment, things are still extremely manual. Lots of spreadsheets and emails being being sent around, manual data entry and re-enter from one system into another yep. system. And, and that creates obviously inefficiencies, but it also creates singular points of failure, uh, which in a you know crisis environment is not a good thing. So I think there's a drive to bring more tools and smart technology to, to the forefront that can help to at least minimize. We can't you know, eliminate um, certain manual uh, task activities, but tries to minimize the reliance on people and creates more, more efficiencies that way. Uh, and then I think the third aspect of that is you know, attempt to create more employee self-service capabilities in the payroll environment as well. I think by now we're all very used to 
accessing information, whether it's a bank information or entertainment services or shopping through our little devices online, you know, in the middle of the night, whenever we want to. And I think the same expectation carries over into our work environment as well, right? As an employee, I want to be able to, you know, access my pay statement or other documents or make changes anytime, right? And um, I don't want to have to call in or wait until someone, you know, is, is available online. So <clears throat> I think that's the third big thing that we see is more shift towards um, self-service capabilities, which also relieves some of the workload on the payroll department. Right? Oh. More things can be done by the employee themselves, then you're not relying as much on um, on your payroll administrators to do those sometimes very, you know, menial tasks. But um, you know, if you don't have the tools, something you need to do, obviously. Yeah, I, th- um, I think we're, see- we're seeing similar things in the in the recruitment space. I probably would have come up with the same three. You know, centralization definitely. Um, you know, everyone's looking to to, to to the new world of work has changed the way that we work and where we're based to do those things and having a central yeah. point of contact makes it easier. And so if you think about those three things, centralization, digitization, automation, and then more self, self-service. So to get there, obviously, you know, you need to, you need to invest in future processes and future sure. infrastructure. And that's where I think sometimes the challenge comes for organizations because Budgets are still tight uh, in yeah. a lot of industries, a lot of organizations. So what we're seeing and what works quite well for our specific model is that companies are increasingly interested to figure out how can we leverage what we've already invested in, our sure. existing provider relationships and infrastructures, while improving on top of that, right? They don't want to, they, they need a fast payback. Yeah. Uh, has of what they've already say, got. Let's yeah. start a project that's you know, going to cost us hundreds of thousands of of dollars and, and the payback will come in you know 18 months or 24 months or 36 months of implementation. Um, they want something that sort of pay as you go and gives you returns very, very quickly. Right. Sure. And, and that's where I think the open payroll model that we're trying to pioneer really resonates in, in the conversations that we're having. Have you ever asked yourself, how can I recruit payroll staff effectively? Please don't give up on your recruitment project just yet. Here at JGA Payroll Recruitment, we appreciate the difficulties associated with attracting, recruiting and retaining top payroll talent. We also understand just how costly a poor payroll hire can be. JGA Recruitment are a niche payroll recruitment agency who will partner with you to resource payroll candidates who will improve both the accuracy and efficiency of your payroll department. Contact us today on 01727 800 377 or visit jgarecruitment.com to find out more. I think you also mentioned um, employee self-service, which I think links to something I've done a lot of talks about, which is you know, improving the employee engagement experience through payroll, looking at employees as consumers now. And, you know, if we're not engaging with our employees, if we're not giving the employees that we're paying what they want, then ultimately they're going to vote with their feet. We're going to lose, the company's going to lose talent and, and all the things that go with it. And it, I think it's the most customer centric time it's ever been for payroll professionals and be able to engage with them through and things like employees. Absolutely. And, and, and look, critical. in that sense, payroll is a great, great opportunity because it's a, very um, regular interaction, right? Yeah. At least sure. once a month in most um, in most environments, or sometimes even you know once every week or every two weeks, you have a touch point with your employee, right? And and you want to give them a great experience in that touch point, right? A obviously payroll needs to be correct. It starts with that. If the payroll is you know has an issue, then you undermine all the the engagement, all the loyalty that that you build up. Um, people will. Very quickly, vote yeah. with their feet, as you said. If you uh, if you can't make sure that they're getting paid properly, but I think also you know giving them a more modern and more user friendly experience as they're acting, interacting with their employer through this um, payment process is uh, is I think a very nice opportunity to tie your employees closer to the organization. You, you mentioned earlier as well, you know, linking to both the self service piece and that employee engagement piece with payroll professionals. But right at the start of this podcast, you also talked about how you are bringing together different systems from finance and HR, which I, I kind of laid my hat on. You mentioned it and thought I'll make a mental note of that because 
we're still finding, although you know payroll can often be based within finance or within HR, but we're still finding that payroll isn't necessarily considered as important by organisations as those other functions. We're obviously doing everything mm-hmm. we can through this podcast and through the work that you're doing at Payzar and beyond to try and raise the profile of payroll. But I know that lo- lots of leaders would really love to automate payroll and just forget about it if that was possible. And I don't think that really helps the reputation. So yeah. what are the consequences of organizations undervaluing their payroll function in your view? Yeah, I, I mean, I think there is this nirvana vision of, you know, payroll should just be totally automated and I just press a button and then, you know, everything magically happens and employees get paid. And, you know, certainly... We believe that there are lots of areas within the current payroll operating environment that can be further optimized and automated. Um, sure. For example, you know we see that when we talk with our clients, a lot of lot of uh, payroll departments spend 50, 60, 70 percent of their time just collecting the data, inputs the data, changes, formatting them into the format that's required by the local payroll providers, by the local payroll system, and then validating what they're getting back from the local payroll uh, partner that they're working with. Um, so hours and hours every month, just you know, doing things that are quite repetitive and transactional in that sense. And, and so we believe there's huge opportunities in that to integrate your data flows from HR, uh, from finance, um, and automate that sort of data transfer and data structuring. Um, that's where you know software technology is really is really good at. But at the same time, let's not forget payroll is a lot more than just calculating your payroll data and doing your gross to net. We already talked a bit about compliance and you know legislative um, regulatory changes that require you to constantly stay up on what's coming in and um, interpreting. Um, the new uh, rules and the new laws, which is generally not possible to be done through technology. So I think uh, there's definitely kind of the human element of that. But then even more importantly, we just spoke about the employees being such an important element within the organization. It's the biggest and most important asset that most organizations have. And the employees are the end customer of payroll, right? They're the people that why we do payroll is to make sure that employees get paid properly and that they have a good working experience and get compensated for what they're doing. And so I think that human interaction, when someone has a question about their pay statement or um, raises a concern, how will this affect me if I, you know, move or take on a new role or change my benefit selection, that's very important to have you know, that human touch of the human interaction with that person. So I think there are lots of aspects that can be further optimized and automated in the payroll environment, but we'll never, we'll never get rid of payroll professionals. I think their focus might change sure, I'd agree from, more, from more transactional tasks to more value-added tasks, but uh, the payroll professionals are not going to go away. And I think one thing that I would add is in terms of increasing the perception uh, or improving the perception of payroll from being viewed as kind of a commodity and very transactional to being viewed as a more important strategic function in the organization is uh, the fact that payroll sitting at the intersection between finance and HR collect, collects a tremendous amount of information about the organization, right? Yeah. Typically, the payroll data holds the most current, the most accurate information about what's really going on in the organization. Who's within the organization? What are they doing? Are they getting paid? Are they working overtime? Are they out sick? Um, No other system contains that sort of rich information. I think making more strategic use out of those insights is a huge opportunity for payroll. I think in the past, people working in payroll, we focus more on is the payroll correct? And that's obviously still very, very important. But I think realizing that all this rich data that we're sitting on can be used, maybe not by the payroll person directly, but by you know your CFO, your financial analyst, your compensation um, uh, strategist, your uh, heads of HR, to make smarter business decisions about the organization, about the business. Um, I think that's incredibly important. Now it takes different tools. To, to bring that together, right? Because part of the challenge with the data is that 
unless you have a good global central uh, you know, infrastructure and solution, it sits in lots of different data silos. So at that point, it's quite hard to make any good use of it. But if you can bring that all together, we believe that there's incredible value in that data that uh, will serve companies extremely well. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think there will also pay all uh, leaders listening to this in, in total agreement. I would add, though, to that list of uh, titles you gave a moment ago, but the potential for a payroll director to also be managing that. There aren't many payroll directors now, but we are seeing as recruiters um, a real increase in the number of companies now employing payroll directors or moving payroll leaders into directorship positions, which I think is quite interesting. And you mentioned yeah. the data. You know, they the world now considers data to be the most valuable commodity that there is. So payroll actually now are responsible for the two most valuable commodities within any business, which is number one or three, arguably, finance, which is money because they they handle more money than anywhere else by paying out, two, the amount of data they're managing, and three, the, the employees at their disposal in the sense that they get that wrong through that employee-centric experience, then that can have a major impact on the business. And if you pull those three things together, it really, for me, heightens... And, and demonstrates just how important the role of payroll is. Taking Absolutely. what you just mentioned further, Mark, to the next level then, before we open the vault, with all the things you've mentioned from automation to being employee-centric to the importance of the role of payroll professional in the future being strategic and utilising data, where do you think payroll is going then in the next five years? If we were to fast forward now to 2026, what's the world of payroll, if you could predict it with your crystal ball, what does it look like? Yeah, I wish I had that crystal ball, but um, <laughs> we all. And yeah, but you know, cer- certainly I have my views, my 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 kind of um, perspective on on where we think, at least from our where we're sitting, where things are going. So I, I think, look, um, you know, payroll is going through a big transformation. Um, in parts, accelerated what what we've gone through over the last eighteen months. What we see and what we believe in. Uh, that there is a trend to shift towards um, a more open, flexible uh, platform solutions. And, you know, you could say, well, you know, that's that's kind of coming from a biased perspective, but it's informed by what we've seen in other industries. You know, if you think about, you know, spaces like transportation or um, hospitality or entertainment, right? All those spaces have been transformed and are now sort of, really uh, run by open platform models, um, whether it's Uber or Airbnb or TripAdvisor or Netflix or LinkedIn in the recruiting um, space. All of those are open platforms, right? They, they work in very different industries, but what they have in common is they're open platforms. They make it possible to access information and to transact and find local service partners in a very transparent and, and flexible manner, right? Where previously, if I take the example of, of the hotel space, right, you had close franchise networks, the Marriott's and the Hilton's. And, you know, if I wanted to go to Shanghai, I didn't know anything about Shanghai. I would just go, you know, I'm going to book a business business trip and I'm going to book my room in one of the brands that I know and that's safe and uh, I'll do that. And I think now with you know, things like booking.com or Expedia or whatever travel platform you use, you have a lot more opportunity to work with very capable, smart, competent service providers and find that boutique hotel that maybe, you know, provides a fantastic sort of better service than one of the big brands at a better price and be assured that you're going to have a good experience because, you know, you see the experience that other people have had and it's easy to transact with them. I don't have to speak their local language. Uh, I can pay in my, my currency. And so I think what we're seeing, what we're expecting to happen in the payroll world is something similar, um, the transformation from these closed network franchise solutions um, that we call aggregator solutions in, in the payroll world to more open models um, where it's easy to interact with lots of different um, service providers, easy to bring it all together in a central place and gives ultimately gives the choice back to the customer and the power in the relationship back to the customer to pick and choose what fits their needs, what fits their budget and still bring it all together in one central place so that it reduces the complexity and um, and, and simplifies your, uh, your global payroll experience. Sure. I think the world is certainly going more towards, you know, you talked about a lot of the services there, which actually are 
street, you know, almost like streaming services or on-demand services. And uh, you know, the biggest taxi company in the world now is Uber, but it doesn't actually own any taxis. And Bookings that yeah. you referenced doesn't actually own any hotels. And I do, you know, I do think that's the world that we're moving into now. It's everything on demand and and being consumer focused. Uh, an interesting uh, a view. It'll be interesting to see how that how that works out when we listen back to this in, uh, in five years' time. So listen, we're going to open the vault. Uh, some short, sharp questions, uh, short, sharp answers. Entering the vault. One piece of advice you would give to someone working in payroll right now. Talk to your peers. Talk to lots of people. Um, I think payroll is a very, in many ways, a very niche um, space, but it's also quite close-knit. And I think getting to know other people that work in the industry, it's not a tremendous amount of events that you know bring us together, per se. Certainly over the last 18 months, it's been hard to mingle and, and socialize. But I think there's lots to learn, you know, from each other. And uh, so I think reaching out and learning from what others are doing is very important. Perfect. If you had the power of foresight and you could change the entire payroll industry with just one action or one improvement, what would that one action or improvement be? What we're all after is kind of reducing the friction between different systems and different the, the different sort of data environments that... Uh, that you have to work in order to get payroll done. So, you know, if there was a magic wand to, you know, magically harmonize all the, the the data across and all the information that sits across the various different systems, I think that would be that would probably be make make a lot of us very happy. I guess it, you know, if you ask me the magic wand, I, I remember when I was working at ADP, we actually looked at could uh, we create a single global payroll engine. That's sometimes also sort of the myth when I talk to people yeah. that we haven't spent as much time in the payroll, global payroll space. Why couldn't we just have one single global payroll engine uh, that can be calculating payroll anywhere? So I think if I had a magic one, it would be that. Unfortunately, I think that's very far off or virtually impossible. At least, you know, when we looked at that at my previous employer, we very quickly came to the conclusion that that can't be done. And so, um, you know, ADP still has lots of different local payroll engines. And I think that's what the industry is going to have to live with. But if there was a magic one. Perfect. Well, listen, as we wrap up this podcast, jump through to the episode notes and there'll be a link directly through to the Payzar website. There's loads of information to explore on the website as well. So it's worth a visit. Even if you're not looking for a new provider, access some of the resources. Uh, there's loads on there to, to, to fill your boots if you're a global payroll professional. I'll also put a link to Mark's LinkedIn profile. So if you did want to link out to Mark directly with any of your global payroll needs or questions, or maybe you just want to talk about the industry in more detail to, to further this conversation, then by all means, link to LinkedIn, uh, Mark's LinkedIn profile in the episode notes as well. And of course, if you're a payroll leader listening to this podcast and it's not global payroll that you're looking for right now, but it is payroll talent, please do give us a call. Here at JJ Recruitment, we specialize in finding the best global payroll talent and we would love to help you. You can find out more about us at www.jgarecruitment.com. And of course, that link will also be in the episode notes. Just leaves me to say a huge thank you to Mark Oliver Fieldler for joining me today from Payzar. It's been a fascinating conversation about the world of payroll, the future of payroll, global payroll, platform providers, aggregators, and more. It's been fascinating. So Mark Oliver, thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to bringing you all the next episode of the Payroll Podcast real soon. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much for tuning into the Payroll Podcast with Nick Day of JGA Recruitment. If you need help with a current payroll vacancy, then please get in touch with Nick and his team. All contact details can be found in the episode notes. In the meantime, to make sure you never miss a future episode, please subscribe to the show through any of your favorite podcast channels. Till next time.